It seems like one by one, all my favorite YouTubers are quitting. And after digging deep and considering a lot of things, I too have an unfortunate announcement to make. You're stuck with me. Thanks for the silver play button, by the way. Cheers to 100K. Today, we're gonna to be taking a closer look at Tesla's high fidelity park assist that creates a 3D representation of its surroundings, which you can see over on the left-hand side, kind of resembling LiDAR, but only using its cameras. You can see it doing a pretty nice job at displaying things like the barriers off to the left and even visualizing ground markings for crosswalks and parking spaces. The ground marking visualizations in particular are actually very impressive to me. And I've seen several people say they look blurry and worse than current ground marking visualizations, but I highly disagree. Let me explain. And if you don't want me to ruin current FSD visualizations for you, I recommend skipping forward about 30 seconds. I'm serious. The ground markings on FSD may look crispier and higher resolution at first glance, but they flicker in and out of existence, and even worse, they always face the same direction as the Ego car. You can see as I'm turning here, the ground markings follow, and you'll never be able to unsee that in all the FSD videos you watch. I'm sorry, I warned you. But the high fidelity visualizations get it right, and I have a strong feeling that it'll get better and better over time and eventually replace everything that we see on the screen. I mean, think about it. With this, they'd no longer need to have generic vehicle models that don't exactly fit reality and can display the true size and shape of all surrounding objects and display what they actually look like. And this is just the beginning. The head honcho of the autopilot team posted saying this is just version one of this technology and that there's gonna be follow-up releases that'll be much better. But this last part of the post makes me think that in the future, this is gonna be used for a lot more than just parking. For now, these visuals are restricted to a pretty small area around the car. You can actually see here exactly where the FSD visualizations change into park assist. And it also only works when you're going three miles an hour or less. And then it transitions into regular FSD after that. But imagine what this could look like in a few years if the distance was increased a bit and they added some color. Exciting times ahead indeed. But enough speculating, the whole reason this update was released was to assist you with parking. So how accurate is it really? To find out, I overlaid the visualizations onto real world footage shot above the car and the results, while admittedly are pretty cool looking, were rather surprising in some ways, both good and bad. It seems very accurate for some things, but does have some blind spots where it kind of imagines things that aren't actually there. We're gonna be testing some pretty standard parking scenarios and take a look at how accurate it truly is. I mean, as close as we can anyways. Before we dive into the results, I think it's important to briefly explain the methodology used to record these videos we're going to be using for these comparisons, which consisted of tracking the car on real life footage, centering the said car in the frame, and then making it the same size as the virtual car. After that, everything lines up pretty much perfectly, which is actually kind of insane if you think about it, in a good way. And look, it even visualizes speed bumps again. About time. There were some cases that truly surprised me, like check out how accurately it's able to determine the position of this cone. This may seem pretty mundane, but current versions of FSD visualizations have a really hard time with that. It's not that accurate all the time though. In this clip, you can see it initially display the cone's position correctly, but as we get closer and closer, it seems to lose track of it and doesn't display it in the correct position anymore. And even as we slowly inch forward enough to touch the cone, it doesn't seem to think it's much of a threat anymore. But to its credit, it did ding at me as we were initially approaching it. Losing track of things directly in front of the car does seem to be a pretty common theme. Here you can see it initially visualized the curb to our left very accurately, and if it had just stopped trying to re-update the curb's position, it would have been completely fine. But as we turn, you can see it update, and it now thinks we are much closer than we actually are. The good news here is that it's probably better to overestimate like this rather than underestimate in a situation where the front cameras don't have good visibility visibility, but I do hope to see it develop a better memory in the future because like I mentioned, originally it displayed the curb perfectly and if it would have just kept that position instead of trying to keep updating it, it would have been much more accurate. Here's another scenario where you can see some similar behavior. When we're far away from this dumpster, it renders it really well, but as it moves through the different views of the cameras in front and we start to get closer, it starts to imagine shapes that aren't actually there. However, it does seem to be doing a pretty good job visualizing the curb in front of us, even though it can't see it. It's probably using the context from the parking spaces to our left. 
And although I think it generally does a pretty good job at rendering curbs when you're approaching them, when you're running along parallel with them, it's kind of a different story. I know this is kind of an edge case, but the car should have all the context it needs to know that there are curbs directly to our right. And while it is visualizing here and there that there's a curb there, it's not doing it consistently, even when I get really close to these curbs off to the right. Although I think a lot of this can be fixed in future software updates by giving the car a little bit better of a memory and better detection, I do have to admit that I think that the cars with the front bumper camera are actually going to perform much better with this park assist. Because when you're backing up using the super wide angle camera at the rear of the car, it does a much better job at visualizing everything accurately. And to be honest, I pretty much always back into parking spaces, so not having the ultra wide camera on the front of the car isn't too big of a deal for me. But I know most people do like to nose into parking spots, so it is something to consider. Keep in mind, this is still just version one of this software, and I imagine we're gonna be seeing the accuracy increase even without the additional front camera. In my opinion, all it really needs is a better memory of what it's already seen. And I know there's probably many of you watching this thinking it's absolutely not acceptable that this car has blind spots when competitors are offering full 360 degree cameras, but let me tell you, those aren't perfect either. Here's an example of Rivian's Park Assist, which uses many additional wide angle cameras to give you an actual 360 degree view. And though it showed it was about a foot away from that trailer, when the owner gets out to check, big yikes. Yeah, that's not right. So while high fidelity park assist definitely isn't perfect yet, and there are some improvements that need to be made, I do think it's a big step up even right now compared to ultrasonic sensors. And to be clear, I think there is a reason cars with ultrasonics haven't gotten this update yet. In parking scenarios like the one with the dumpster we looked at, ultrasonics probably would have performed better and given you more accurate distances, but remember, they can't see curbs or other low objects that can still damage your car at all. And at least the new Park Assist gets those things right most of the time. And keep in mind, this is the worst this is ever going to be. I can't wait to do additional testing on this in the future. And before you go, I wanted to apologize for the lack of recent FSD drives. I know you guys like them, but given that version 12 could release any day now, which features a new AI architecture, kind of like a drive GPT that supersedes human written code, I believe that additional reviews of version 11 aren't really that useful anymore. But what is useful is a free and easy way to learn more about how artificial intelligences like ChatGPT actually work. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science with thousands of interactive lessons and in all kinds of topics, basic to advanced, and new lessons are added every month. Studies have shown that interactive learning has been proven to be six times more effective than passive learning, like watching video lectures online, which is something that I can attest to. I recently finished their lesson that dissects how large language models work, and I gotta tell you, it's actually helped me quite a bit with my existential crisis regarding the future of AI by demystifying it a bit. You not only get to see how these models are choosing their next words, but also get to manipulate the models themselves to produce different results. It showed me how massively important training is, and I think there could be a lot of overlap with what we're gonna see with version 12 of full self-driving as it moves away from human-written code and moves on to an AI-based architecture. No matter what your skill level is though, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and lets you solve at your own pace. So if you're ready to try a better way to learn, you can start your free 30-day trial by signing up at brilliant.org slash AI driver. And as an additional bonus, the first 200 people who sign up using that link get an additional 20% off an annual membership after their trial ends. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you so much for watching. Until next time everyone, bye.